This video explains how to apply a function to each list element in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you several examples and all of these examples are based on the list that we can create with lines two to four of the code. So if you run these lines of code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new list object called my list is appearing. And we can print this list to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line five of the code. And then you can see that our list contains three list elements. And each of these list elements contains a numeric vector. Now let's assume that we want to apply a certain function to each of the elements in our list. Then we can use the lapply function, as you can see in line seven of the code. And within the lapply function, we need to specify the name of our list. So in this case, our list is called my list. And then we need to specify the function that we want to apply to each list element. So in this case, I want to calculate the mean of each list element. And then I'm storing the output of this in a new data object that I'm calling my list mean one. So if you run line seven of the code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new data object called my list mean one is appearing. And we can print the output of this by running line eight of the code. And then you can see that we have created a new list which also contains three list elements. And each of these list elements contains the mean value of the corresponding element of the input list. So for instance, the mean of the first list element of our list, my list, is 3.5. Now you can also see that the output of our first example was a list object itself. However, we can also return a vector instead of a list object using the sapply function instead of the lapply function, as you can see in line 10 of the code. So if you run this line of code, another data object called my list mean two is appearing at the top right. And we can print this data object by running line 11 of the code. And then you can see that this data object contains the same values as the previous example. However, this time these values are stored as a vector instead of a list object. So in the first two examples, I have explained how to calculate the mean of each list element. However, it's also possible to apply other functions to our list elements, as you can see in the next example in line 13 of the code. So in this line of code, I'm using the sum function instead of the mean function, and I'm returning this to a new data object called my list sum. So if you run this line of code, this list object is appearing at the top right, and we can print the output of this by running line 14 of the code. And then you can see that the sum of the first list element is 21, the sum of the second list element is 24, and the sum of the third list element is 25. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage, statisticsglobe.com, because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video, so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.